Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Christ is risen as we continue to celebrate Easter. Alleluia. We're all getting a little impatient. It's, it's been too long. It's hard to believe that the last time we were all together here, the altar was still in purple. We hadn't even blessed our palms yet. And now here we are. The gold's been up there for a couple of weeks, and we know it's going to be longer until we're back together. It has been too long. This isn't how Christians are meant to live. We're meant to live together in our community, in our congregation, gathered to together in the communion of this altar. That is how we're to live. So this is hard on us. And it's not the only thing we get impatient about. A lot of us have gotten impatient about the end of winter and the coming of spring. And now we see hope. We can see flowers and hear the birds again. And the trees are starting to put out their leaves. Their dogwoods and the red buds have already blossomed beautifully. We know spring's coming. And we know that behind that will come summer. It's, it's a light at the end of a tunnel, I suppose. It's certainly a sign of hope that what we've been suffering through will come to an end. And that's true of all of the things that we're getting impatient about. Whether it's the virus and being separated from each other, being cut off from our work, our income, our being cut off from our altar, from the Lord's Supper, from the fellowship of gathering together. And so now we still have to wait a little longer. What things do you have in your life that you're impatient about? Those two will be resolved. Maybe not the way we wanted, maybe certainly not in the time frame we wanted, but they will be. Our hope is always in the Lord. Even as we sit here in the midst of uncertainty, even as we sit here with signs of hope, but not knowing for sure just what's coming or how it's going to unfold, we have hope. Just as the disciples did, sitting in that upper room in fear, locked with the doors locked, not knowing what was going on, and what was coming. And there was Christ bringing them peace and hope. And it's the same for us. Now, that doesn't mean that everything that's going on, God's going to fix miraculously. Not at all. And there are some things that won't be worked out the way we think they should be. But that's okay. Through all of those things, God will work good for us. And at the very least, he'll beat down our pride and he will teach us patience. He talks to us about that in Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, Seek my face. My heart says to you, Your face, Lord, do I seek. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger, O you who have been my help. Cast me not off. Forsake me not, O God of my salvation. For my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries. For false witnesses have risen against me, and they breathe out violence. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. So we wait for the Lord. We wait for the Lord to bring us back together so that we can dwell in the house of our Lord and gaze upon his beauty in his word and sacraments here in his temple. We devoutly long for it and he will bring it. All of which points us to greater things. All of this, 
All of the things of this world will pass away. But at the end, we will look upon the beauty of the Lord in his temple, in the person of his Son, in the eternal bliss of heaven. So as we endure all of these temporary trials and we wait impatiently as we suffer through a variety of things, we pray for patience, we pray for humility, and we trust in God. Let us pray. O God, by the patient endurance of your only begotten Son, you beat down the pride of the old enemy. Help us to treasure rightly in our hearts what our Lord has borne for our sakes, that after his example we may bear with patience those things that are adverse to us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.